Hello learners and uh, welcome to my session on assessment techniques in EVS. We are going to talk about performance test. My name is Russell D'Souza and uh, I come from Nirmala Institute of Education, a college of teacher education in Goa. The structure of this session would go this way. We would uh, begin with a quick look followed by the concept of a performance test. We would look at features of a performance test followed by a format that you can probably make use of and uh, we would end with how performance tasks help in learning. A quick look. There are a variety of techniques to assess. You are familiar with it. These are also a part of your course. There are basically three assessment techniques. They are oral techniques, written techniques and performance test. I'm very sure that you have been exposed to oral techniques and so also written techniques. Before we go to performance test, let's have a look at something. Oral and written techniques focus on measuring a learner's ability to, to recall information or to solve something or to analyze, defend maybe a given statement or a given idea to debate about a topic or even to discuss. There are two examples that I have listed here. The first example says home remedies, that is, uh, you know, remedies at home can cure a person who is bitten by a poisonous snake. And the learner has to comment on this. So what is the basis on which the learner is going to comment? What is the learner expected to be doing? Well, the learner has learned in class about different types of snakes. And he knows the meaning of a poisonous snake. So what do you think he would do? He would actually recall information. He may do some amount of analysis, some amount of discussion, and then he would defend. Let us take the second example. In Dr. Beaumont's experiments, we know that his experiments were conducted on a person by name Martin to study how the digestive juices of secretions work on the food in the stomach. Now, wasn't it cruelty by Dr. Beaumont to get Martin to sign a contract to work as a servant for him and carry on with his experiments on him? Don't you as a learner think it's cruel? It's not ethical? So, what do you think a learner would do in such a case? How would he respond to this particular uh, stimulus or this particular question? Yes. He would definitely analyze this statement. He would probably have a mental debate. He would, he would have a self-talk with him. And probably based on this, he would defend. So, in these two illustrations that we have seen, we can arrive at some sort of a working understanding that the focus of these two techniques, that is oral and written techniques of assessment, is on do you know it or not? The focus is on knowing it or not knowing it. So we come now to the third assessment and that is a performance test. So what is a performance test? So we would say in very simple words that a performance test is an assessment that basically measures a student's ability to apply the skills and the knowledge that he has acquired or he has learned in the classroom or maybe outside the classroom or from a unit or units of study in a new context and in a new situation. So the learner is applying his accumulated knowledge or in his skills in a new situation, depending on whatever the given situation is. Now, there is a lesson that talks about mountaineering. As teachers, how do we approach this lesson? Do we teach it in the traditional theoretical way? Or do we draw out a sense from this particular unit? And we present this unit 
or this lesson to our students. So they learn a lot of things about mountain hearing in terms of mountain climbing and the different types of knots and hooks which are made use of. So the task here for the learner is to demonstrate any three of the following knots that mountaineers make use of and which can also be made use of by us in our daily life. So I have given five different knots. The first one is the clove hitch. The second one is the girth hitch. The third one known as the water knot. The fourth one is bowline. And the fifth one is the fisherman's knot. Now what do you think the child is supposed to do in this case? He is supposed to demonstrate what he has learnt in a new situation. He has to create these knots or he has to form these knots. So how would he do it? Well, that's real learning. Let me demonstrate this. I'll take uh, two of these knots. I'll take the clove hitch and uh, the fisherman's knot. So all that we require is a rope. And uh, after taking the rope, what I'm going to do is uh, I will make a loop this way. I will make a loop, all right? And then I will make another loop. So I have two loops with me. So I have the left loop and I have the right loop. And all that I am going to do now is I will place the loop in my left hand over the loop in my right hand. And so we get something like this. And this particular uh, knot that we have created is known as a clove hitch. So this is a hitch. Now this has a daily utility. You can make use of this clove hitch for anything. Maybe you want to pitch a tent. You can make use of a clove hitch. Now the only difficulty with the clove hitch is that the loose can that the knot can come loose if if the object that is within the hitch it starts moving. So the object needs to be strong and firm. So this is a clove hitch. And the second knot that uh, we will look at is known as the fisherman's knot. So again we have the rope and we take the two ends of the rope and we call this as the standing part. So this part which is, stand, uh, which is there is known as the standing part. Similarly you have this part which is also the standing part. And uh, all that we need to do is we place one part over the other. So we have something like this. And then we take the, the free end, the free end which is there. And we make a knot around the free end itself. This way. So I have made one knot. Let me come to the other standing part which is free. And um, let me make a knot here as well. And um, here it is done. So and so what I have is known as the fisherman's knot. Now let me actually demonstrate to you how this works. So if I take this mug and um, I take this knot and I put it around the mug and I pull it, I pull it really tight. Uh, so that it is firm, it should not slip and here I can carry the object. Now again this can be used in our daily life. For example, you have a bundle of firewood or you have a bundle of maybe straw, just anything. You can make use of such a knot. So you see that what mountaineers use, we can also be making use of in our daily lives. And so this is a classic example of a performance test. Now, we know that mountaineers wear shoes. So do we in our daily life. But how are the shoes that mountaineers wear different from the shoes that we wear? How are they different? How are the soles of these shoes different? Now, a child, when he or she wears shoes, they have definitely seen the underside of the shoe. They have seen the sole of the shoe. But now they have to actually draw a diagram to illustrate 
how the shoe of a mountaineer would look like. Well, when they learn the lesson, they learn that mountaineering is a tough task. And as mountaineers, they cross streams, sometimes with less water, sometimes flooded streams. They walk through slush, they walk through loose mud and loose soil. So what sort of shoes would mountaineers actually make use of? What would be the nature of the soles of their shoes? And so, you know, as per the stimulus, the child would draw. But let me present to you the shoes. So this is a pair of boots that mountaineers would make use of. And let us look very closely at the soles of the shoes. Now, if you look very closely at the soles of the shoes, you will find the soles very tough. They are very rugged. The grooves are deep. And why do you think the grooves are deep? Exactly. They have to sink into the soil or maybe into the slippery part, whatever the nature of the substrate is. So what does this example tell us, therefore? It tells us that a performance test is a form of assessment in which the students are asked to perform real-world tasks. And what I have made use of now by way of the two knots is a real-world task. What I have made use of by way of looking at the shoes of mountaineers is a real-world task. So the child has to demonstrate meaningful application of essential knowledge and skills. So the learner is engaged in doing something for which he or she has to go beyond simple remembering and understanding. In other words, the learner is supposed to be making use of higher cognitive skills like applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. So when he draws his creating, the learner uses higher cognitive processes in this whole process of the performance task. So, Sometimes this performance task is also known as authentic assessment. Now, authentic assessment may be a new term to you. We do not largely make use of this term. But a performance test is known as authentic assessment because it includes a task for students to perform and a rubric by which their performance on the task is measured. So, when I use the word authentic assessment, it gives us something that is known as an honest judgment. It's an honest judgment about the learner's capability or his ability to perform the given task. And you may have heard sometimes people saying that assessment should be authentic. And this authentic assessment is nothing but the ability or the capability of a child to demonstrate that he can apply his accumulated wealth of knowledge and skills in a new situation or on a given task. Now, this is a rubric that I have designed to measure the ability to tie knots. Now, there is a column that goes from top to down that talks about the criterion and the criterion is the knots. So, the first one is the water knot. The second one is the fisherman's knot. And if you go from left to right, you will find a continuum which talks about fair, good, very good and excellent. This is nothing but the ability of the child to perform the task. So if I look at the fisherman's knot and I look at fair, it says that the child can tie a part of the knot but needs outside support. If I say good, then it says that he can tie most of the knot, but needs less outside support. If I say that what the child has done is very good, this means that the child can tie all of the knot and needs very less outside support. And if I say excellent, the child is excellent in tying the fisherman's knot. It means that the child can tie the whole knot and needs no outside support. So this itself tells us, the rubric itself tells us that the performance of a child can be mapped on the continuum. So as teachers, we can, we can design the simple rubrics to assess the performance that a child is displaying. 
So a performance test is designed or it is formulated to encourage students to demonstrate their knowledge, understanding and ability in challenging situations on any given task. So the focus of performance assessment or, or a performance test is on how well can you use or do what you know. So that is the degree. It is just, it is not concerned with a recall or a recognition. It's taking you onto a higher level altogether. That is how well can you do something? How well can you, can you, how well can you identify different types of seeds based on observable characteristics? So, performance assessment brings about the convergence of the three dimensions of the human personality. That is cognitive, that is concerned with thinking, affective, again which comes from our brain and performance, that is our ability to make use of our body parts. So it's a convergence of these three attributes, that is the cognitive, affective and the performance dimension. So what are the features of a performance test? So the student actually performs a task or an activity rather than just chooses or selects responses. So the learner has to demonstrate his ability to do something. And when he does this, it facilitates active learning. That means he is active in what he is doing because he has to demonstrate his ability. He has to demonstrate his capability. Now the task can range in complexity from, from simple short activities taking only a couple of minutes to a little longer projects that can span over maybe a few hours to a few days. For example, identify the plants in your garden at school that can be used to treat common cold. Today, we look at nature, the bounty of nature to aid in helping us to live better. So what are those plants in the garden that can be used to treat common cold? And how is the preparation to be made? We talk about plants, the different type of plants in EVS. So how do we make use of these plants to better our own life? So we can look at performance task or performance test on a continuum from very simple activities to complex activities. So the task can range in complexity depending on the grade level. For example, a child who's in class two would have a different types of a performance task. Similarly, a child in grade three, grade four, and grade five. So the performance task, therefore, can be something simple at one end and can range in complexity. So from simple to complex. So who decides the nature of the task? Is the teacher always? Well, when we talk about the decision and the nature of the task, there are three things that determine it. One is the content, the second one, the students, and the third, the teacher. So the content, the students, and the teacher are responsible to decide the nature of the task. I have a few illustrations to illustrate the meaning of performance task. For example, you have to write a slogan for a blood donation campaign along with a note that justifies the appropriateness of the slogan that you have written for the campaign. A simple slogan could be, if I'm donating my blood, or for that matter, a child in class four is donating his blood, probably he may write a slogan which says, one drop of blood for millions. The second illustration is to create drawings or posters or a collage. Today we talk about a digital collage which is created on using programs, computer programs on computers. A digital collage on maintaining personal hygiene. So you draw up a chart or a poster that's based on personal hygiene. So why should I be having bath? Why should I be cutting my nails? Why should I be combing my hair? Why should I be brushing my teeth? So simple things, so, the, so children create their own posters. How do I maintain good relationship with others? So what are the different languages that your classmates 
in your own class speak. It's nice to know about our classmates as well. The social interaction, it builds into relationships. And at the same time, you try to know something more and something deeper about them. Another task is um, mark on Google Earth at least three important places around your school. Today, you'll be surprised, uh, the learners, that our, our children are tech savvy. They are given a name. They are called digital natives. And so, you know, you'll be surprised the way they handle technology. So, give them technology, take them to Google Earth, and ask them to mark three places around their school. And determine the aerial distance between these places by using any two different measures of measurement. So, measures of distance. So, they could be making use probably of meters, kilometers, and you can also take the finer units, that's centimeters. You can also identify a spot in your community that you feel has changed totally over a period of time. A piece of land that was green, that had so much of tree cover suddenly perishing. Or you can classify the given seeds based on certain characteristics that you observe. What are the different habits of fish that are in your aquarium in school or at home? Or uh, you can design a roof for your house so as to collect the maximum amount of water that will be fed into the underground water harvesting tanks. Or an adventure trail, if you have a field trip and you have a map and then you mark those spots on the map, that's an adventure trail. It's a classic example of a performance task. So the performance task can be administered on groups or it can be done individually. And it is to be always assessed by the teacher. In the absence of a teacher, it can also be assessed by a knowledgeable expert who understands the concept of a performance task and who also understands how to make use of the designed rubric. So, assessment is to be done by making use of rating scales, a checklist or a rubric. So, whatever you as a teacher decide to make use of, you can make use of it. Now, a performance ta uh, uh, test should always have a format. Now, of the format would basically comprise title of the task, very elaborately to be specified, the grade, the subject is EVS. What are the learning outcomes? What is the task? A clear description of the task and the tool that will be used to measure the performance of the learner. Whether it's a rating scale, whether it's a rubric, whatever, whatever tool you are using to measure, that has to be clearly defined. Now, how do performance tests help us? It helps children to cut across concepts and apply themselves in new situations. Misconceptions that they have at times they get clarified. Teachers can also identify the weak spots in a child's learning as a child works on a performance task. It helps a teacher to have a better understanding of the student in terms of the attitude, the concept clarity, the learning style of the student. And it provides a lot of scope for self-reflection and self-improvement for the learner. Disadvantages, it's time consuming. It takes a long time to plan a performance task. The next thing is that teachers should know how to design, administer and assess performance test. And it calls for extreme finesse in designing performance test. So in this session today, we have seen the importance of a performance test, how it differs from written and oral test, the features of performance test, several illustrations. So I hope this particular session of mine has convinced you and um, it has conveyed some meaning about performance test to you. Thank you.